Good morning from beautiful Brisbane, Australia. How are you this morning? It's wonderful to be here with you. My name's Linda. I'm a trauma recovery coach. And on Recovery to Remission today, we're going to talk about our limbic system, which is a lot of different parts that make up our brain and work together. Well, they don't all make up our brain. They're just one part of our brain with lots of little bits in it. It's like putting a piece, the pieces of the puzzle together and they all work together. But with childhood developmental trauma, um, they don't actually work in the way that they should because they've been trained to work a different way to respond to survival, you know, and the fear and so much more. So when we suffer severe and chronic childhood trauma, there is a risk that that may, this area of our brain called the limbic system may have incurred developmental damage, which severely affects how we feel and how we behave as adults. So from that, we understand that even as adults, no matter what's happening, when our limbic system has incurred damage, we're going to find that we we have times when we don't have control over our emotions. We don't have control over our behaviour. Um, so the whole limbic system comes together to form part of our brain where our emotional reactions are driven by the responses by information relayed by our senses. So our taste, touch, vision, smell and hearing all go into our brain, you know, like super highways, actually better than super highways, like so quick that we can't even imagine how quick it is. And then what, as that information goes in and our brain's like our super highway computer that, you know, is, has a bit of a malfunction at times, uh, our emotions, our emotional reactions are strongly shaped by the memories stored in the limbic system and in particular in the amygdala. Okay. So the amygdala and the hippocampus normally work together where all of this information goes into the amygdala. And then the hippocampus becomes the place where all, it's like our filing cabinet. Everything's stored away in there. And if I said to you, what's your most favorite memory from life? Uh, you could instantly go back and say, right, oh yeah, I remember that time we were at a fun fair or, you know, a major theme park and you can see all the people around you still. You can smell the smells and so much more. And, to the point where you actually become really excited again about that whole memory. But what happens is with childhood developmental trauma, think of it like this. If as a child the dog, a dog bites you, then we restore that, we restore, we store that response. <laughs> it's Friday, guys. Uh, in our limbic system and without even thinking we take a wide berth around dogs for the rest of our lives, okay? We don't even have to think and we can find our body veering around dogs and, uh, you know, we're not, then all of a sudden the next thing is, you know, we don't want them near us. We're making sure that they're not going to have a uh, aggressive response to us. Now, that's just a really simple explanation. But when we've experienced childhood developmental trauma, of course, all of our senses are on high alert a lot of the time. Okay, so when, what happens is when, when we're children, when our limbic system is repeatedly activated by all of our threatening and frightening experiences because they haven't been stored away in the hippocampus because we've got, we had, as children, we had no language, we had no understanding, the people around us were supposed to be our greatest cheese squad and take care of us and they weren't okay for a multitude of reasons but we have this repeated information coming in and we end up living on hypovigilance or hypervigilance all right so what happens is we come into adulthood and we think oh great finally i'm an adult and i can just get away from all of this and carve my own path out in life and then as time goes on, all of a sudden we find that we're having these really bad 
reactions. Good morning, Diana. And uh, we're going, but I'm an adult now. I'm not living in that situation anymore. And we haven't had the language prior to this to understand that our brain, our whole brain system and our body, everything's wired on high alert because we were just, it, it was just repetitious what happened. And that's how our brain was trained to be on high alert. Um, and it's really, really super important that we understand that this reaction happens on an unconscious level. All right. There's nothing conscious about the reaction that happens in our limbic system that sets us off into anxiety or panic attacks or instant responses or emotional outbursts or Oh crikey! <laughs> you know, I just think of one time my son, my son was in talking to me, and the next thing you know, I was just furious, and I had to sit down and think, why? That's not who I am. I'm not an angry person. So it takes a deeper understanding of what's happening, what's pushing the buttons, um, and sometimes we don't even know. But what we can do is take our emotional response and go, right, I know that's not who I am. How do I begin to become aware of that emotional response a lot quicker? And then how do I want to put structure and strategies around that so I don't have to go down those emotional pathways again? Plus, we want to do that so that we can rewire our neural pathways, okay, neuroplasticity, where we can rewire our brain. Um, this information isn't out there a lot. I still see a lot of comments around the interwebs about how we can't change our brain or we can't change this. We can, okay. They, uh, science now knows what neuroplasticity is. And we can rewire our brains, absolutely. Uh, if we couldn't, I wouldn't be sitting here today because what happened to me because of childhood developmental trauma was I reached a stage in my adult life where I felt so unsafe that my whole system began shutting down. So I got to the point where I couldn't walk. I could not walk unaided. I couldn't talk. <laughs> I lost all memory and, and to know what to do, how to do the most basic things and how to full-time carer. So it's taken me a lot of years to get to this point, but I'm determined that I will have strategy and structure uh, to reclaim and rewire each bit of my brain. And it's working, obviously, because I'm sitting here talking. So with the neuro neuroplasticity uh, in our brain, it, it means that we can take a variety of measures to heal. And that science does know now that not one size fits all, okay? But strategy and structures do definitely fit, but how we go about it is different for everybody. Some people, all right, um, in the beginning, it's really healthy to avoid an excess of stress now, not avoid it forever, but sit down with your therapist or your trauma coach and work out strategies so that you can begin to interact with high volumes of stress and work out how you can manage it without tipping yourself over into the anxiety and panic attacks or having the depression trigger go off and then you lose days at a time. All right? All of this stuff is doable. Um what else can we do? We, having strong and relational emotional support is really healthy as well. And that's why the group that I run, we do emotional safety first and foremost above everything because the one thing that we need to begin to experience is emotional safety so that we can begin to feel safe enough to change things up with strategies and structure. Okay. Uh, Self-compassion goes a long way. We have an inner critic that's so strong at times that we do need to learn how to manage that as well. Pete Walker's book. Oh, I got it on my table today. If you haven't got hold of Pete Walker's book, Complex PTSD, From Surviving to Thriving, and 
do it, especially to work through inner critic and especially for information on grief, all right? Lots of chapters on grief which will help as well. I have done vid three videos on grief, so it's pretty intense. But because we become visual learners, it's really good to have the book in front of us so that we can go back over it. You, I find that it's really important if, say for instance, you watch a video of your mind and you go, yep, I get that. It's really important to watch it or read whatever you're reading over again in a space of three times over five days because you want to take that one thing and really absorb it into your entire system, okay? It helps because our short-term memory is just, uh, you know, terrible. <laughs> it, and, and that's for reasons that are not our fault, all right? And it's something that we can work, again, it's something that we can work on. But I find that revisiting information really helps to solidify it into our memory and into our soul, really into the deepest parts of us so that we can begin to affect change. All right. Uh, EMDR, which is eye movement, pardon me, desensitization and reprocessing therapy has been found to help some people. Again, it depends what stage of recovery you're at uh, for it to help you. But just remember, do it with, with somebody who's actually not authorised, equipped, trained to do it and understands that you need to be grounded before you leave each session. And there are definitely large volumes of people who have found that procedure very, very helpful. Okay. You don't want to go away from EMDR and be triggered because it can be very painful to not the EMDR painful, but painful because you're processing memories. Okay. Um, trauma informed movement. I have a group called Trauma Informed Movement Class, and you can go in there and retrain your brain, body, breath to move together. Okay. Uh, keeping your mind focused and it's really important because it helps keep our prefrontal cortex engaged with the limbic system so that our actual whole brain gets used to working together again. There are lots and lots of different strategies and techniques that can help you. Remember, reach out to somebody rather than sitting back and waiting for anything to happen with complex PTSD, we need to know what is the next experience I can have that, that can help me shift around and rewire my neuroplasticity. And it can also help me shift around and gain a greater perception of my life and where I can go from here. All right. Have the most gorgeous weekend. We've shared lots of information and time together this week. Uh, take one thing out of the whole week and begin to put it into place and what you can do too is grab a, grab a little book like this, okay? Write down what it is that you learned from each video and then pick one thing. And then each day, just take five minutes a day on that one thing to notice, to write down and notice where you're putting it into place and where you'd like to put it into place even more. Having that conscious building that conscious awareness of what you're doing is great for the neuroplasticity side of things. It actually reinforces your, not just personal growth, but it reinforces where you're taking your whole self into. Okay, have a good weekend. And if you're in Australia and Brisbane, looks like we're having a wet one. So stay rugged up with Netflix binges and enjoy yourself. You're welcome. Bye for now.